Okay guys, I told you I had some fun videos coming for you this uh, winter. Fun is in, you know how winter is, it always gets busy feeding every day cows and stuff. But the fun videos. So as you can see, there's a few more sheep. Make sure that you're subscribed and come back and see our next video. I'll be talking more about us adding these sheep to our flock. Uh, but in today's video, I wanted to talk about this dry lot that we made for our sheep. So um, I can't remember now the acreage that Ryan and I did, but um, we were in a D4 drought this summer. And so as you can see up north, we do not have um, much stockpile. If we do have stockpile, it is going towards our cow herd. Um, so the sheep kind of got last pickings and you know what, sheep are hardy and that's okay. So, um, we decided that instead of trying to keep them in hot wire fence, two strand hot wire, we were going to, um, build this lot, have it as a permanent structure if we ever need it again in the winter and, um, you know, not, not build bad habits of them jumping that hot wire. We had one that... Last year we had some that jumped and so it, it became a problem and so we had to get rid of them and so we didn't want that habit to start again. So um, we built this out of barbed wire that we had around the farm. Um, obviously with high tensile we've stopped using barbed wire like as a permanent fence but we just had this. Um, Ryan's dad had it in a barn and so we used that and just some leftover barbed wire from breaking down fences and then obviously we had the high tensile all of these um uh, sucker rod posts we have on the farm we have a ton of them and we actually sell them so if you guys are interested um shoot me a message on email or go to our contact page on our um website and you can get our contact information if you guys are interested in placing an order we are in south central kansas and we can paint them for you and drill a couple holes if you want that. Um, but yeah, so we had all of this material here and we decided to go ahead and use it <laughs> for, um, for something, like I said, that we could use for a long time. So obviously we're going to be growing our sheep flock um, right now with these girls that we added. We have about 80 and um, we wanted to make something big enough that in a few years we weren't going to outgrow it. Um, and we are going to be feeding hay in here, hopefully, um, eventually feeding microgreens. Um, I have another video coming out about here soon about, um, flushing these sheep, uh, these tree, this tree row ended up having a bunch of leaves on the ground and the sheep love them. And, um, now these are my new girls, but I'll show you some of the other ones are just fat as toads. There's uh, an older U. This one, no, nope, older. I was trying to find my F1s. My F1 American Whites. That one is one right there with the orange tag. Um, here's another F1 right beside her with the. Oh, never mind. Nope. Just right there. These two. Okay, but yeah, talk about dry lot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, um, like I said, we did. Uh, how many wires is this? six seven one two three four five six six strand of barbed wire and we were able to use um the sucker rod post as our you know our um oh stability we did put um step-ins uh or sorry um goodness t-post to ground it out um every so often but um we were able to use what we had. Ryan did really good on the corners here. All the corners are really nice. And then we have two gates that are on this side. The kids are in the van watching a movie right now. We're headed to town. And then actually up here on the north side. So we could get the sheep shed in here. Um, on the other side of the, uh, sorry, the tree row is where we have our water which is the closest place that we could get um, to a water source. Um, but yeah, then we offset it. I keep getting distracted wanting to talk about sheep instead of dry lot, sorry. Um, we offset it with high tensile electric and it's been going really good. Like I said, I had this one that 
is a stinker and she likes to get out. So in a few of the areas we have bigger gaps in between this barbed wire, um, like on a couple of the corners. And so I need to go back there with some extra barbed wire and just shorten up those gaps. That way she doesn't see them. Or if she does try to jump through, then, um, then she will be stopped. <laughs> but this is just kind of what we used. Made everything hot. We, um, uh, electrified underneath so Ryan knows all the jazz with that if you have questions he could probably answer it you need these hardy hardy gates it's always good to have a husband that will help you with your projects <laughs> and then this is out the other side so yeah but I wanted to share that with you guys this was a project that we were working on for a while we had to pull off of it because it was a big project um, with the drought, it was uh, a little bit harder than we expected digging these holes, these corner posts. Um, we ended up having to try, like start a hole, dump water in it, go again a little ways farther. Oh goodness guys, it was a headache. And then even pounding in these uh, sucker rod posts, um, we had to wet down the ground. So it was not, not ideal, but we got it done. and. Like I said, it's good to have a permanent structure that we, um, permanent area that we can put these sheep if we ever need to. And also we can use this for cattle, which will be awesome. Um, we, Ryan even talked about planting a cover crop in this area. So exciting things ahead. I'll have to share with you guys these uh, Facebook marketplace uh, finds that I found. We're not gonna be able to use them um, this year probably cause they're a little bit too tall for the sheep, but pretty cool so okay like i said be subscribed if you aren't already lots of fun stuff coming up um with our sheep operation i'm going to be sharing how our process of breeding up to full american whites so if you guys are interested in that we'd love to have you tag along but okay we'll see you guys in the next video bye guys